Welcome back. An unusually strong solar storm heading toward Earth could produce northern lights this weekend and potentially disrupt power and communications. Officials say strong solar flares beginning Wednesday have resulted in at least five outbursts of plasma capable of disrupting satellites, power grids here on Earth. Power plants, spacecraft up in orbit will be taking precautions and this geomagnetic storm could be visible to us here in Canada. You never quite know, but we hope so. To break down the science behind it, let's bring in our science and technology expert Dan Riskin, who is here with me at the desk and studio. Great to see you. So what is this? Good seeing you. So the, the sun it has burped and the burp <laughs> is floating through space on its way here. And it's actually at least five, by some measures, seven different belches that are all converging and coming together toward the earth. And uh, and basically the, uh, the US authorities are saying, look up this weekend, it could be spectacular. And so if you live in a place like Edmonton or Winnipeg or any city that's sort of touching on the north or especially if you're in in the the territories you have a good chance of seeing something truly spectacular this weekend uh, if you're flying this weekend uh, make sure you get if, if that flight goes at night make sure you have a seat so that you're facing north on that plane uh, and even in Toronto or south of Toronto in the states uh, we may be able to see some some solar activity some kinds of auroras in the sky Geomagnetic storm, first one issued in nearly 20 years. Uh, what is a geomagnetic storm? Yeah, so it's a geomagnetic storm watch. We've had lots of geomagnetic storms. So basically the sun goes through these 11 year cycles mm -hmm. where every 11 years it's burping a lot mm -hmm. and sending off these big coronal mass ejections, basically just big fields of plasma out into space. And then it goes through a dip where it's not very active for a while. And then it gets active again every 11 years. We're at the peak of that cycle. Mm -hmm. And so we've been waiting for this kind of stuff. And we've seen some northern lights not too long ago. There were some back in March. Um, but this is a time where we see these waves coming towards Earth. And you can't predict them perfectly. But it sure as heck looks like we could have what they call a severe geomagnetic storm. That's a G4. Now, they have a, a system from G1 to G5, G5 is extreme. We haven't had an extreme since 2003. That one knocked out power in South Africa and created problems in Sweden. This is a G4, so it's still one level below that. But again, they're not totally sure until it gets here. So it could be a little bit better than we expect. It could be a little worse than we expect, but it's just definitely worth looking at the sky at night tonight and tomorrow night. I feel like I've seen movies about this kind of thing, you know, <laughs> where like all power and communication is knocked out on planet Earth. Yeah, yeah, so that's probably not gonna happen. For the most part, we have got pretty good infrastructure to watch for this stuff, but with that said, as we get into the solar maximum, if you if there were something that were truly substantial, we are so much more reliant on those networks of power and telecommunications, so much more than ever before in our history, that the stakes are a lot higher. So there is a potential that, you know, th this show and everything else on the internet and everything just goes dark over the weekend, but I think it's not very likely. Again, this is a G4, not quite a G5. And, you know, authorities know that this is coming. There might be some glitches in the system. There might be some GPS readings that are a little off. But for the most part, I think the realistic expectation is that this won't be too bad. So you're saying people might not be able to watch CTV news? <laughs> I know. It's, it's that it's that terrible vision of the future none of us want to imagine. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's probably just going to be a good chance to see some great northern lights and not really stress about it. Just take it in. And that's, you know, living in the north has plenty of drawbacks. It gets pretty cold here. Yeah. But we get northern lights, right? And so... Whatever, uh, you know, the farther north you are, the better your odds, but you just never know. It might be that even in Toronto, we get spectacular northern lights tonight. We talked about those folks who are up in orbit, let's say the International Space Station and satellites and whatnot. What happens to them? Yeah, they can see the auroras from, from up there. They can look down on them, which is really spectacular. Uh, what you're seeing is this this radiation coming at the planet that would wipe us out and kill us all if we didn't have a magnetic field. So uh -huh. it, because your compass points in a direction when you hold it up, that same set of forces stops all of those terrible things from hitting us and ripping our flesh off and killing us all instantly. Like we would be in such a bad place if we did not have this, this, uh, this, magnetic field on our planet that protects us. So when you're looking up, if you're lucky enough to see the Northern Lights ever, whether it's this weekend or ever, you can just sort of have this feeling like, those are things that are trying to kill me from space and I'm being protected by my planet. It's kind of a different way to look at it because they look kind of beautiful, but they also look kind of scary and they are just a little bit scary. Dan Riskin, our science and tech guy with his eye on the sky for us. Thanks for this, Dan. Thank Good you. To see you as always. Great to have you with us back in studio.